how am I feeling? So I am not nervous at all. I am ready, excited, and extremely happy. What I'm feeling right now, I think I'm pretty calm. I'm feeling happy. I'm feeling excited. I'm, I'm looking forward to celebrating with the family and to see the boys together today. Cousin, the one that follows directions. And my husband's a good boy because his wife pays attention. <laughs> I think it's it's now it's it's kind of relaxed because everything's done. Right. Um, and today we're kind of relaxing before the wedding. And as you can see, we are um, we are all natural. Um, after this, we'll kind of shower and change and get ready for the wedding. But um, I, I think I want to comment on um, Jen's um, scheduling and what she's provided. Attention to detail. A attention, yes, attention to detail. At first, she really wanted to be a veterinarian. And then uh, she just, when she went to Temple, that's when she got into the, the uh, cancer and stuff like that. Well, she started her school in upstate New York at Potsdam. That's where she went to college. And then she was there, what, one or two years? Two years. And then she went to Wilson, and then she became a vet tech. Which, that didn't last tell you long. The Wilson story. It was like she got out there and looked around, and she goes, there's no boys. Wilson is a women's college. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> I'm not sure that far. She, she, got out, she got out of there in a hurry, but you know, she graduated with a, a, a bachelor's degree and then she worked for a while um, in vet technology and then she just, for some reason, wanted to change her mind and became a cancer pharmacist. Okay, I will tell you a story that um, I've... Wait, what was the question? A story about Todd. About Todd? Yeah. Oh, pick okay. one. Okay, all right. Todd, it's easy because of Todd's lifestyle and what he's done as a child. I'll, I'll tell you one instance, a story, that um, we've always been involved with livestock and horses, and I've had horses. And at one point in time, I took... Well, I, we were boarding our horses in Paramus. We live in a, a suburb of uh, New York. Um, so there was a, one remaining stable and I had my horses there for a while and it was a day like this. Um, I took my horse home. I rode it home from the stable to our house in Paranus. And Todd asked to be picked up from school, which was maybe a mile from our house. He also had recently had surgery on his leg, had bone spurs removed, and he had was walking with the aid of one crutch. So that day, I <laughs> went to school on horseback. Uh, Todd got on the back of the horse. We waited in line with all those other soccer moms. <laughs> Todd was carrying the crutch, and we rode home. How's that for a story? My boys are his boys, or all our boys. Mm -hmm. What do you think this means for us? I think it means a couple different things. Um, you know, we're a blended family, so we've been very patient with that. And in the beginning, actually, before we even stepped over that line and decided we're going to enter into a relationship, we're going to be more than friends, we actually talked a lot um, about what that would look like 
especially since we had a long distance relationship. We were over an hour apart and we both had children, very different age ranges, so they spanned 10 years. So I've known Jen for quite a long time, close to 20 years, and I knew she was a really amazing woman. When we first started to get together, that feeling of knowing who she was came to me. And as we were dating, and, we intro and I introduced Ty and Cody to her, and how she took to Ty and Cody, and I knew she would be a perfect fit for my boys and myself. I think Ty and Cody tell their dad, I just want you to be happy. I think they, they recognize that their dad is happy. I think they've talked to me a lot about the ways that they've noticed some changes in their dad. And, and it's for the better, they feel, and that's a good thing. Um, the boys, my boys are really excited because they adore Ty and Cody. So they're excited to have big brothers and they're excited to have Todd as a stepdad. So that's very exciting to everybody because they're just, I think the boys all are ready to blend as a family. All right, well, so Dad, I got a question for you. If you had to, uh, if you had to give Todd any sort of advice. Oh, well, Todd knows. Todd, Todd knows Jen. I mean, like, <laughs> there's really nothing I can tell because uh, he knows, he just takes his orders. <laughs> Good boy. What we want, you know, yes, you haven't asked the question, but yeah, if you were to ask me what I want out of this whole thing, I want them to be happy. In whatever form, whatever shape, whatever they do, whatever they encounter, they should just, you know, get some joy out of it because life is too short not to have a joy. So that's my wish for them. Oh, well, if they can uh, work together and uh, help each other, that's fine, you know, then uh, they, they will make it work. Jen, my love, my soulmate, the only one who knows me the best. It's impossible to tell you how much I love you, adore you, and care about you. I love my family, our five boys, are everything to me. I can't ask for anything more. You do it all. Love your future husband. Todd, it's hard to believe this day has finally arrived. In just a few hours, we will say I absolutely do and begin our forever together. If you would have told me over 20 years ago that day we talked out on the deck, we would be marrying each other, I would never have believed you. I am so thankful you asked me to be more than just friends. I didn't realize part of me was missing before you. You are my laughter when I am frustrated, the comfort when I am scared, the confidence when I am unsure of myself, the strength when I am weak, the joy when I hurt, and the love that overflows from my heart now that you are in my life. Life with Sammy, Isaiah, and Micah was full, but now that you and Ty and Cody have joined us, I am complete. As I am writing this to you, I cannot stop smiling. It is an amazing morning. The weather is absolutely perfect. What a fantastic day to marry you and celebrate with our family and friends. It's the perfect way to start our life together as husband and wife and blend our family. We've spent a lifetime without each other and today we commit to building a new lifetime together, parenting with each other, partnering to raise our boys and share our dreams. I can't wait to see you today and to get to walk with you for the rest of my life. All my love, Jen.
Jen, standing here before you today in front of our families and friends, knowing for certain that you are a gift sent to me, Ty and Cody. I knew from the first moment I met you that there was something incredibly special about you and I intend to spend the rest of our lives showing you I am committed to you, Sammy, Isaiah, Micah, and my boys as one family. Jen, I have always known that there was something special about you, but I had no idea what life had in store for us. You are one of the greatest surprises of my life. When we first met, I remember noticing how beautiful you were, but what really stand out to me was that I could actually feel that beauty in your heart. You have helped me grow in more ways than I could express. You have been loyal, loving, supportive, and nurturing to me and the boys. You've shown me devotion, patience, tenderness, and understanding. You put effort into making sure I'm okay and love you so much for that. Jen, you're an amazing mother and step up mom. You are incredibly smart, you are unbelievably understanding, and you know me so well. You're truly a gift to me and the boys. You're my best friend. You're the love of my life. You are my heart. You are my everything wish, the person I wanted to grow old with. You are my guide and love. Scratch out. Shit. <laughs> You've taken two families and made them into one love, devotion, and that's beautiful. And that beautiful heart, Jen. No, I got the better deal. I know I got the better deal. I'm gonna do my best to make you feel the same. Todd. We've known each other for over 20 years as friends, and yet it took us that long before we would allow our hearts to connect and fall in love. 20 plus years of friendship gave us a solid base to build our relationship. And it also means there is now more of each other to love because we have children. I am thankful for the love you show Sammy, Isaiah, and Micah, and the relationship you are building with them. As we enter into marriage, we are growing our family we are blessed to have you, Ty, and Cody in our lives. You are the answer to all the dreams and prayers of a little girl come true. You are smart, sensitive, fun, strong, passionate, kind, gentle, and romantic. Your laugh lights up your eyes and causes my heart to race and gives me butterflies in my tummy. You acknowledge my strengths and you accept my faults, though there aren't many. <laughs> you love me for who I am. You make me want to be the best version of myself each day. I take you as the man you are today, who you will become tomorrow, and for eternity to be my husband. Even when the days come that we grow old and grayer than we are becoming now, I promise to always see you with the same eyes and the same heart that I see you with now in this exact moment. So today, Todd, I promise to honor, respect, encourage, and love you unconditionally, even when we disagree. I promise to dream with you and celebrate with you and walk by your side no matter what life brings our way. I promise to sing and dance in the car next to you to make you smile and shake your head at me. I promise to provide snuggles, back rubs, and to stroke your hair anytime you need me to. I promise to laugh with you and comfort you during times of joy and sorrow. I promise to be your confidant, inspire and encourage you when you fall short. I promise to always believe in you. I will support and be patient with you as we work together to achieve our goals. I promise to always keep for us because I know we will overcome any battle we may face. Lastly, I promise to choose you every day that God gives me in this life, not because I have to, but because I want to. 
The bows and the rings we will exchange today mean that you have me and that I have you. It means we share a life together. The only thing I ask of you, Todd Adam Applebaum, is that you outlive me so that I never have to live another day without you. Todd, I promise to give you a lifetime more. I promise you forever and forever. Hello? Should I sing? Okay. Where's Abby? I'm going to need you to help me hold this. Don't get nervous. It's not a book. It's just very big font. So I'm going to need help because I can't see very well. So, all right. Hi, everybody. I'm Talk right into that mic so we can air. We yes. go. I'm Cousin Debbie. I'm Todd's cousin. Hello, everybody. All right. Hello, hello. Okay. I'm so happy to be here today to celebrate the merging of two beautiful families coming together and becoming one. Todd, I think you know you've always been very special to me, and you hold a very special place in my heart. 
Growing up, I was lucky enough to spend a lot of time with Todd and Lance, and I have a lifetime of memories, and I'd like to remind you guys of just a few. Um, I remember driving down to Florida in separate cars and talking on the CB radios, uh, arguing over whose dad is stronger, the many lectures from Todd on why Kiss is the greatest band in the world, um, and then there were the horses, the horses. Um, hang on one second. I also have wonderful memories of the lake, both lakes, Grandma and Poppy's and Lake Wall and Polpec. I still remember playing badminton with you and Lance. Aw, Lance. Um, you guys both laughed at me and encouraged me when I was trying to learn to water ski. And my favorite, you taught me to ride horses. I don't know if you realize it, but you helped me so much with your love and support. No words were needed, and you were always there for me in your own special way. But not all paths are paved equal. Some paths are tough and require effort. But as I've learned in my life, no one escapes the rough stuff. But having people that you know are forever in your corner makes the road easier to travel. My dad calls this the foxhole guy. Where's my dad? It basically means when you have somebody you would trust or rely on with your life. Dramatic pause while I turn the page. Will go through the battle with you and someone whom you will want in your foxhole. Todd, you're one of those people in my life. And it warms my heart to say that I've already witnessed Jen being that person for you. So there's so much to say about the man you are, but here are the highlights as I see them. Todd loves his boys and his family with all of his heart and soul. Uh, he has a hard exterior, but he's one of the most caring people I've ever met in my life. He's a hard worker and a fighter. He's very wildly protective over those he loves, and if he doesn't like you, you know it, but if he does, you know it too. And he has a very odd sense of humor. Hmm. Todd often calls me just to check on me before bad weather, especially when Marty's away. Do you have batteries? Always checking to make sure I'm OK. But I remember the day he called to tell me that he had met somebody very special. He said she was beautiful and smart. I can't say what he really said here. but And she had three amazing children. Well, Jen. Todd did not lie. You're all those things. I've already witnessed them and more. I've been moved by the care that you've shown for Todd and the boys, specifically the 50th birthday party. And I think it's fair to say that we were all really touched. Jen, I could easily see why my cousin fell in love with you. And I can clearly see the positive out impact you're having on his life, Ty's and Cody's life as well. And I hope and pray that he has the same impact on you, Sammy, Isaiah, and Micah. My father told me once, when he was speaking to our cousins Libby and Saul in California, the secret to a happy marriage. Cousin Saul told Dad that the marriage is not 50-50, and it's not 100-100. Some days, a person is only capable of giving 60%, but a loving spouse will step up and give that other 40%. And some days it's the other way around. But over time, a good mal marriage balances out with patience, love, and understanding. My wish for you both is that you continue to sp support and uplift each other and always have unwavering commitment to one another. So ladies and gentlemen, please raise your glasses. Jen and Todd. May you always be as in love as you are today. May you find patience in your heart in the days that you're tired. May you always appreciate each other and notice the small details. May you not focus on what's wrong, but focus on what's right. And put each other first. Cheers to a lifetime of love, happiness, and cherished memories. L'chaim. Good job. Again, Cousin Debbie Hauser. Next, we're going to call up 
cousin Abby Doherty. All right, Debbie, that was beautiful. Um, good evening, everyone. I am Jen's cousin, Abby. <laughs> I am absolutely honored to have the opportunity to speak and toast to the new Mr. and Mrs. Applebaum. The journey of life and its stages happens so quickly that if we don't have moments to stop and deliberately reflect, we wouldn't see the struggles, the beauty, or the strength gleaned in those stages. We also have the opportunity to view those experiences, sorry, and stages through a lens of tragedy or through a lens of triumph. Jen and her good friend Todd's love story arguably developed during one of the most tumultuous times in her life. I distinctly remember a conversation Jen had with me about some rules she had for herself about not dating her friends, and she truly feared the risk of losing this special friendship with Todd. Well, Todd, since we're here today, you're persistent as shit. Congratulations. <laughs> Todd, when circumstances brought you back into Jen's life, you faced challenges and grace, and provided unwavering support. I have seen the way that you look at Jen, challenge Jen, honor Jen, as well, as well as embrace her beautiful sons, Sammy, Isaiah, and Micah. Good friend Todd became a teammate, a, sh a shoulder, a partner. Jen, I have watched and been in awe of your relentless support of Todd and his amazing sons, Ty and Cody. You have given yourself to be one with Todd in all that he has faced in his journey to be here today. Today, I lift a toast to Jen and Todd, not only to their union, but the family that they have become. Today is not your average wedding. The beauty of today is not just two people who fell in love, but it is the commitment, connection, and oneness of a family. Stay friends always. Stay persistent in pursuit of each other for your family, because today is a triumph. Please lift your glasses to the union of Jen, Todd, Ty, Cody, Sammy, Isaiah, and Micah to the family. Congratulations. Great job, Abby. Abby, can you do me a favor and bring the microphone over to Todd's dad, Steve? He's going to give us a toast. I figure it's easy if he does it right from the table. I'm up. Okay. What? Okay. Again, folks, Father of the Groom. I get special privileges. Thank you very much. <clears throat> there have been some very special events in my life. The birth of my children, the birth of my grandchildren, milestones of our friends, and today. We're all here today to wish Todd and Jen, two special people, the very best life has to offer. Jen has done a remarkable job, which, has been, which would have been impossible without the boys, all the boys. It also gives me gives us both an extraordinary it, it also gives them both extraordinary opportunities. For Todd, it's to relive the years with his boys. For Jen, it's a glimpse of the future. For me, it's a big win. Now my family has grown dramatically. I now have more of everything. It's provided me with opportunities to meet some wonderful people that I can now call family. What, is le what, uh, what lies before you, no one knows. But I can promise you this, it will not be boring. Whatever life has, will bring to you, whatever challenges you may have, you have a secret weapon, each other. Long life, happiness, mazel tov.
Good job, Steve. Thank you. Good, nice job. All right, one last toast or welcome speech. Our groom, Todd, would like to say just a few words. I would like to thank everyone for coming to celebrate our special day. Jen and I have friends from Texas, Florida, North Carolina, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, New York, and Northern New Jersey. <laughs> To Jen, I can't put words on how lucky I am. You came into our lives. You've showed me how to be a better person. You treat and care for Ty and Cody like your own. I thank you. You are my everything. Now I have five boys. To my parents, dad, you're just not my dad, but you're my mentor. You've showed me so much in life. I love you. Mom, I love you more. <laughs> you are the strongest person I know. You are the glue that holds our whole family together. Lance and I are lucky. To my brother, you're an amazing father, an excellent role model for Tessa and Ethan. Michelle, you are also an amazing role model for the kids. I want to thank everyone for coming. I want everyone to have a great time. And thank you again. All right, folks, one final thing. We'd like to call up Uncle Billy and Uncle Mark for the blessing. I'll have them come right up to you, Todd. Again, Uncle Billy Markle and Uncle Mark Applebaum. Uh, I'm Uncle Mark. I'm Todd's uncle. It uh, came as somewhat of a surprise for me to uh, be asked to say the blessing before the meal. And it was a symbol that I share it with his uncle, and uh, kind of as a symbol of two great families coming together. Two families of different cultures coming together. There's something of a tradition in the, Jew in the Applebaum family. My father was a Polish Jew. My mother was a first generation Italian American. There was a little bit of a question as to how we was going to be raised so my mother's family decided for her. They came to the house and said, Katarina, tu esposo ebreo, your husband is a Hebrew. Tu mangia un ebreo, you eat the food of a Hebrew. Tu tu tembaso un ebreo, you sleep in the bed of a Hebrew. Your son is going to be a Hebrew, and that was that. And I grew up in a family of two different cultures, and in my mind, they were all the same. 
that people were all the same. Talking about different cultures, gefilte fish and macaroni on the same table <laughs> more than once. But when I got into the bigger world, I was kind of surprised to find that people spoke that we were all different. And we're not different. We weren't raised that way. We were raised that we're all the same. The, uh, it's like we're doing now. The prayer before the meal. The Muslims say a prayer before the meal. The Jews say a prayer before the meal. And the Christians, they say grace before a meal. Christian, grace comes from the Latin gratia, that he is grateful. That we are grateful for the meal that we're about to have. And in the Bible, in Luke, in the New Testament, it talks about how Christ said the Hebrew prayer to his disciples. In the, one of his trips, the resurrected Christ met two of his disciples, and they didn't know that he was the guy, but they was about to have a meal, uh, and he broke bread with them. That's what the Jews do. They say a prayer, and they break bread, and they share it amongst them. We do that in Passover with the matzah. They said the prayer, and he broke bread, and then they disappeared from sight, and that's when they knew that he was the man. So I'm going to say the prayer that Christ did It's in here someplace. Anybody know what this is? It's a yarmulke. It's a skull cap. We Jews wear it to show devotion to God, but uh, I'm going to give you the real skinny on this one. Back in the day, back in the day, when the armies would conquer each other, they would take slaves, and the slaves would be known by their master by what, what kippah they were wearing. The green one belonged to this guy, and the red one belonged to that guy. And we wear the kippah to show that our master is our Lord God in heaven. And this is the prayer. Baruch Ator Anoi, blessed be you, our Lord, our God, Eloheinu Melech Olam, King of the world, ruler of the universe, Hamotzi Lechem, mean Ha'aretz, who bringeth forth bread of the wine, bread of, bread of the earth. Amen. Thank you. I'm known as Uncle Billy to Jen. Jen's grandfather was a pastor. He had seven children. Evidently, Jen's father was one of the children, and my wife was one of the children. And we grew up together knowing the Lord, accepting the Lord, and asking the Lord for guidance and direction. And as I heard this wedding mass today, and I heard this love going on, I thought, what a great time to share a scripture that is in my mind. And it, it refers to everybody in here. It's in 1 John 4, 7 and 8. It says, Beloved, or friends, let us love one another. For he that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, because God is love. And we see the love taking place here today in this holy matrimony of husband and wife. And we appreciate your doing these things before us. So we wish you well. Let us pray. Father, again, we give you thanks for these meals. We give you thanks for this marriage. But most of all, we give you thanks for Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior, and our soon coming King. Bless us all tonight as we're here, sharing your love with one another. And may you receive the grace, the blessing, and the joy for it all because of Jesus, our Lord, our Savior, and our soon coming King. Amen. Who takes this? Ladies and gentlemen, Uncle Billy Markle and Uncle Mark Applebaum with our blessings. Thank you. <laughs>